So I've been living the ketogenic lifestyle and I do not have a thyroid. How long do you recommend staying in ketosis and do you recommend intermittent fasting? That's a great question. I know a guy who wrote a book. Uh, it's called Keto Flex. Uh, honestly, I, I, I would take that approach. I, I really do think that, that, that that's a great approach. There's studies, and this is where I think the ketogenic lifestyle or people who go keto get super rigid in it. I do think there's some degree of flexibility. Um, and I think most people are just, they feel like the minute they, they fall out of ketosis, they're done. Like it's like they just kicked them over the, the cliff and they're rolling down. It doesn't have to be that way, right? And ideally, you want to maintain some degree of metabolic flexibility. I, once a month, I eat sushi, right, to maintain. But I also do it on a day that I do fat. It's the only meal a day I eat. I train legs on that day. Like, I set myself up for it to, to, to deal with it. Um, but I do think that prolonged fasting, especially in women, uh, and I mean like multiple day fasting, can be challenging. Um, it can have hormonal effects. Uh, there, there are studies coming out now showing that. And it, and it can lead, especially if people are going from prolonged fasting to one meal a day. I see it a lot in women who lose their hair. Who here has done keto and maybe lost hair? Right? Wow, that's, that's a lot. Um, <laughs> he lost it all. Uh, no, but I, I do see that. And one of the main contributors to that is it's not a keto thing. A lot of people say, oh, when my hair's falling out, it's because of keto. There's electrolyte things and stuff, but m primarily, it's a protein deficiency. It doesn't matter if you're eating keto or not. When you, when you eat the, the recommended dietary intake for protein, which is like the basic amount to stay alive, it's horrible, the recommendations for it, um, you're likely gonna lose your hair because you're deficient. The reality is your body needs a lot more protein than we're giving it credit for. Uh, not that we need to be eating like a bodybuilder and eating three, 400 grams of protein a day, but we need to be eating adequate amounts of protein. And if you're doing prolonged fasting and one meal a day and like maybe eating 15 to 20 grams of protein per day in that meal, you're gonna have, uh, you're gonna have some challenges due to protein deficiencies and that'll definitely affect your thyroid. So I would take more of a flex approach in that case.